Welcome to my channel, folks. My name's Rob Purcell. This is my 2021 solo archery elk. Uh, took me over 10 years and 100 days in the mountains, thousands of vertical feet, many days of highs and lows. Only elk hunters can understand. Pushing my old, sometimes very fragile body. You know, taking the knowledge that was passed on to me by a generous buddy Lance and adding hundreds of hours in the off season, you know, e-scouting and whatnot, learning elk behavior, learning calls, watching some outstanding content on YouTube, um, and flinging a lot of sticks at my target. I put it all together with a new level of patience, um, a better arrow setup, uh, a borrowed spotting scope, and determination to make decisions methodically without letting my comfort dictate my next move. So the first day was uh, just that spike. Um, took me 10 hours of um, using the spotting scope to find them. Day two, pretty much just the deer. Um, I'm looking across at the, you know, valley on the far side, checking all of my surroundings and and uh, just spending lots of time behind the glass. And day three was nothing, um, you know, so just kind of chugging along there, hoping that uh, day four would be better, um, and actually was. I ended up seeing a cow calf in the morning, um, you know, got myself a, a grouse when I was out wandering around, so I was thinking, you know, well, maybe, maybe this is it, right? Maybe we're gonna turn some stuff around I just did a lot of observing, watching this cow and calf, see what they're going to do. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to just go rushing in and try to make it happen, and sometimes that's what you have to do, but sometimes you just take it easy, learn the lay of the land, and make sure you're 100% what you're going to do. So now here's the first time I see this bull. He's just about at the top of the hill where those uh, cow and calf had been the morning before. And uh, I didn't even notice, but after replaying the video from the spotting scope, I noticed that he had actually chased a cow. And you'll see the calf run by right there, just through the middle of the screen. Um, you know, he was moving her around. She ended up coming down low and uh, through a patch of trees that were there. And, uh, you know, it was a little learning curve that, hey, there's probably a little trail through there. And I ended up going in there and finding lots of beds and the next day and, you know, just kind of checked out where she had been. And he wasn't bedding too far off. I had got a few calls. So, you know, I was getting closer. Okay, so this is what I'm doing instead of sleeping. <laughs> so I'm trying to plan for this bowl tomorrow. I don't know whether I should go up high, the wind's coming down, or if I should start down low and just go into the wind, whether I should call or not, it's gonna be no trails, it's just all bushwhacking, so I don't even know how I can get even close to them. So I'll probably have to call just to get them to come out anyways. It's, it's gonna be a gazillion different things to choose, and there's probably a one one way to get it right, so. I guess we'll see. Okay, so I saw that bull last night, right at last light. Um, so I, I snuck into where I saw him, did some cow calling, and I got him to chuckle a couple of times now. A couple things, the sun's going to be coming up right in my face, which that's just the way it is here. And um, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to draw thermals up to him. So I'm kind of waiting here to see what happens. Doesn't usually, the wind usually just keeps coming down. The, the wind yesterday was so strong, I had to take my tarp shelter down and I thought my tent was going to come apart. It was crazy. So if that happens again, then that might give me some coverage to get closer to him with the noise. I've kind of pinpointed where I think he but he's in a gnarly spot. So anyways, just waiting here to see what happens. And by the way, nice face paint, eh? <laughs> First time I've done that, but I don't want him 
not seeing me, so <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay, how do I look in my party? So that's, uh, that's my camp. The tree line there. Just give you a quick little scan around. So what's happening is that uh, <laughs> the thermals are changing, so some of the wind's mixing around. I gotta wait. It's a good thing I stayed back from where that bowl was. Um, I'm on this, uh, it's like a little cat road, and it goes along the edge of this timber. It's actually some pretty cool stuff. Okay, here it is. It's a small little, small little rub kind of marks it. And then I'll show you here. Okay, bull sighted with time left in the day. This is the first time. Um, I've got well over an hour to make something happen, and I've got everything ready to go. I'm, you know, I'm, when I spotted him, I'm sitting with my bino harness on. I'm fully geared. I'm like literally ready to just go, and that's what I did. Stay tuned. Well, I got close to him, but his little buddy beat him to me so I ended up taking his little buddy um, and then the work really began you know two kilometer each way through some of the most gnarly territory you can imagine just to clarify uh, when I say never again like in the thumbnail I mean solo hauling a elk okay first uh, first load out I got my bow and a hindquarter. Whew. This is going to be a lot of work. He is in so many log jams. I don't even know if there's a way out without log jams. So, man, it's going to be a rough one. Anyways, on we go. Out. So it took me eight hours uh, to get the four trips out um, I got to the butcher with 15 minutes to spare. They would not stay open late because of COVID issues, employees and whatnot. So it was a mad rush. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, it'll help me out immensely to make better content. I've got a long way to go. This is on an iPhone and an iPad. Nothing else. Thanks much.